Hey there, welcome over here today. I am going to be showing you four new recipes using this shortcut ingredient, canned biscuit dough. All of these recipes are so easy to throw together and your family will love them. If the kitchen looks different, it's because we are visiting my parents for about a week here in New Mexico. And then I do also wanna share with you some exciting news. We found out we are having a baby girl, so it's pretty exciting. Anyways, let's head to this kitchen and start cooking. We're beginning today by making these perfect cinnamon roll bites. So to my cutting board, I am going to add my one can of Southern Homestyle canned biscuits, and I'm cutting them into smaller pieces just like this, and then go ahead and set this to the side. We're going to work on the cinnamon sugar mixture now. So into this large gallon size Ziploc bag, or you could use a large bowl for this. I added a third a cup of regular sugar along with a tablespoon of cinnamon in. Go ahead and give this a really good shake and then you are going to add all of the canned biscuit pieces that we just cut up right in there and then give it another shake to coat the biscuit pieces. This recipe is seriously so perfect for the holiday season or it's just a really easy breakfast to throw together. So after all of our biscuits were coated in the cinnamon sugar mixture, I placed them right next to each other on my greased baking dish like this. This baked in my preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 20 to 22 minutes. While I had that in the oven, I started on the frosting. So into this little bowl right here, I added a cup and a half of powdered sugar, next two tablespoons of melted butter, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and about three tablespoons of milk all together. I beat this together until it was to the consistency that I liked. After I was finished frosting our cinnamon roll bites, they were ready to serve. These are so, so scrumptious. I'm sure you'll love them. They taste so similar to a regular cinnamon roll, but you do not have to put in hardly any effort at all to make these. Now we need to make these glazed bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast bombs. So to this bowl, I'm adding six eggs. After that, go ahead and add in about three tablespoons of milk with a dash of salt and pepper, and then scramble this all together. Now that we have our tablespoon of butter melted in the pan on the stove, I added our egg mixture and go ahead and cook this egg mixture up. Of course, it should only take a few minutes. Once your eggs are perfectly scrambled and cooked, just place them into a separate bowl. Now it is time to assemble these egg bombs. So I'm taking each biscuit and rolling it out super duper thin, and then you will fill it up with your favorite toppings or whatever you want to fill it with in there. I added plenty of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, of course, some of the scrambled egg, and then I cooked and crumbled a little bit of bacon. I also added the bacon in. Now I'm folding up the biscuit and sealing the seam and then placing it into my round baking dish that I greased. I'll set this to the side. We're going to work on the glaze now. I do wanna let you know the glaze is optional. You don't have to add it on top if you don't want to, but my family enjoys it. In my little saucepan on the stove, I added a fourth a cup of butter, along with a tablespoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, and poppy seeds. Bring this up to a boil and make sure you do whisk it very frequently. Let it simmer for about a minute or so, and then you are going to pour it all over the top of your breakfast biscuit bombs. This is gonna go into a preheated oven to bake on 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the tops are nice and golden brown. 
Here they are out of the oven. These are so cheesy and delicious. I love how you could put whatever filling you want in the center of these to make them your own. These are absolutely perfect. Now we're making these chicken pot pie cups and I love how they only call for a few ingredients. So to my bowl, I added one can of cream of mushroom or you could use cream of celery or cream of chicken. And then I added two cups of frozen mixed vegetables along with one cup of cooked cubed chicken. I just used a rotisserie chicken or you could cook up your chicken on your own. I also added a dash of salt and pepper and then gave this a really good stir to combine all of the ingredients. I have my can of biscuits right here. I'm just using the homestyle biscuits and I'm rolling them out as thin as I could possibly get them with my rolling pin. And then I'm placing them into my muffin tin. I did grease my muffin tin. Now I filled the center of each of the biscuits with plenty of the chicken pot pie mixture. This baked on 375 degrees for about 18 to 22 minutes or until the biscuits were perfectly golden. These chicken pot pie cups are really, truly delicious. Also, if you wanna make them for a larger amount of people, this recipe is so easy to double. Now we're making this meatball sub casserole. So to begin, I have my can of biscuits right here. You are going to want to cut each biscuit into about six pieces. So you want them nice and small, just like this. Over to my large bowl, I'm adding them right in there. Next, you are going to want to add your meatballs. I'm using this bag of Italian style frozen meatballs. I did thaw these meatballs before I added them in though. I just thawed them in my refrigerator but anyways after I added those in I added 14 ounces of marinara sauce along with a third a cup of Parmesan cheese I gave this a really good stir I grabbed my 9x13 baking dish and sprayed it with nonstick spray and then I added the casserole right in there I spread it out easy evenly just so all the biscuits were kind of separated this baked on 375 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes or until the biscuits on the top were golden and then I pulled it out of the oven and then I added about a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese on the very top this baked for an additional 10 minutes Here's my plate of meatball sub casserole. I served this alongside of a side salad. This definitely really reminds us of a meatball sub. It tastes so good. Even my little daughter devoured this one, so it's adult friendly and kid friendly. I hope you found a recipe for yourself today and I would really love to have you here. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.